Hey Moonies, welcome to the Salem Fan Club Podcast. I'm your host, Victoria L. Johnson, and I'm here with Arthel Isom, CEO of Dare Dot Stagio. <laughs> hey Arthel. Hello, Victoria, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Great. Thank you. Thank you for having me on your, on your podcast. It's pretty cool. Yeah, thank you for coming. I'm really excited to talk to you. I'm always I always have fun talking to you, I feel like. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like it was cool. Like it was, it was great getting to see you in New York. So this is kind of this is cool. This is like a you know, catch up since since we won't be in New York for a while now. That you know, we're kind of can't fly yet. Yeah, I was talking to someone about when he's go to Japan, and we we're like, we gotta wait till it opens back up again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like all closed up right now. Yeah, it's good though. That's good for y'all because it's it's wild over here. <laughs> <laughs> keep no. us out they're crazy <laughs> you guys are, i know japan's like no, no one's allowed no mm-hmm. hopefully 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 it'll open up soon though yeah i'm hoping so too because I, I need i want to come back but speaking of japan though um as you know when i was there i was like sailor moon stuff so that's why i have this yeah. podcast but um i want to know what is your first memory of watching sailor moon mm, it's my favorite uh i my- my first memory of watching Sailor Moon is, I guess, man, I think I was in, oh, no, I, actually, it wouldn't have been when it was on TV, like, regularly. I think I watched it when I was in college with some friends. I think that's, like, my first time watching it. Um, we were doing, a, a like, an anime, not like, not like a bench channel, really, but like we were just, like, it's, like, we would always rent the tapes and things like that at that time, still, and rent um or rent dvds and mm-hmm. i think one of my friends she was like really into sailor moon and she was trying to get us to be into it and so we, we each had to introduce an anime each week like we would like watch a series or something so after we had watched a record of lotus wars i think then one of my friends was like hey you should you guys should watch like sailor moon and we were like what and then for Sailor Moon, and then like um, I remember, then she she brought a few episodes and and, and we watched it. And it was cool. Like it wasn't like we, I thought. I think we thought it was like we're not gonna we don't want to watch this because we were just a whole bunch of guys. But but then we watched it just like any other regular anime. We didn't watch the whole thing. We we only had watched a few. She said she was like, oh, don't worry, you don't have to watch the whole thing. I just want to show you. And that's kind of my my memory of it. And, everyone in the dorm was kind of fighting because they didn't want to watch it but then we ended up watching it you proved y'all wrong that's a good memory or not but i think that is that was how we were introduced to say i think it's a good memory because i feel like first it seems like you kind of had like an anime club which is kind of cool i like that idea of introducing the different anime every week yeah yeah i mean it wasn't super regular like that but like Mm -hmm. like but yeah like we would we would do because so i had like two co-workers who were really into anime and then some of my um, my roommates, because you know we went to an art college, right? And so the the yeah, like, that was just that was like the thing. We just kind of like there was like this point where we just would always watch anime together. I guess it's kind of like a club. Yeah, that sounds fun. But also, it's I feel like club. yeah, I love that there was like a Sailor Moon pusher in this group too, because I feel like Sailor Moon fans are very like watch Sailor Moon. I mean, that's what I'm most <laughs> so I I'm like shout out to her. Um, oh, and I feel yeah. like after y'all watched it, you're like, okay, that wasn't that wasn't so bad. So yeah, we were like, it's okay. Yeah, because you didn't want to admit how good it was. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we were like watching like war films. Like I think right after we watched like because we were what, what, what did we watch before Record of Lotus War? I think we watched like Escafloni. Hmm. And then and I think that was kind of what no, I think we watched, yeah, I think we watched Escafloni and then like Record of Lotus War. And then um, she was like, oh, like it. And we all liked Mero. And so then she was like, oh, if you guys like Mero, you, like, you know, you're like this too. And we were like, it's not like Mero. <laughs> but like, yeah, then, yeah, a little bit, maybe. <laughs> yeah, she was super, that's interesting to know that like all the characters, I mean, all the people who like Sailor Moon are always pushing Sailor Moon. I think so. I feel like, I feel like there's no casual Sailor Moon fan. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's just like, like your diehard sailor <laughs> your diehard sailor guardian or yeah senshi yeah. guardian scout <laughs> yeah. you know. um do you have any favorite episodes or moments um 
Well, what you say is what I'm watching is um, the um, Black Dream Hole. And yeah. I like that. I think it's just because it's an interesting, you know, play on a classic tale. Mm -hmm. Piper. I, I think that's part I think that's kind of cool. And, yeah. And it's just, it's, it's interesting, like how Sailor Moon would uh, tell dark stories, but mm -hmm. without, but at the same time, it doesn't feel dark, you know, like you get, you watch it, like, um, you know, it, like you, it has like this, like harder way of telling the story, but like, if you really think about it, like someone just like controlling all of the human or like the kids in the area, you know, and then taking them away somewhere, that's pretty dark. That's pretty crazy, you know, but, um, so I thought that was interesting. Yeah, that's so true. Like the, throughout the show and like that movie mentioned, like I didn't realize how dark it was until I got older and I was like, oh, this is actually a really dark show. Like people are dying, people are like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> getting possessed and all this stuff. And then, but you don't feel it because like everything's just like so pretty and like the way they do the storytelling, like you said, it's just so, um, I don't know, yeah. it puts rose colored glasses on you, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, you know, it, they're not like, well, of course, it's not super gory either. But it's not yeah, like they, right. They have a good way of kind of covering it up, like characters yeah. just flying all over the screen. Right, yeah. I actually got like some DVDs for my cousin to share with her daughter, and she was like, This is too scary. And I was like, What are you talking about? I was watching this at six. <laughs> and then I was watching it again. I was like, Actually, maybe you're right. Maybe she shouldn't watch it. Oh, wow, it that's crazy. But how, how, old, what, how old was she? I think she was four at the time oh okay and so she's like oh this is scary that's crazy yeah because like the first episode like one of the characters the villain like turns her head around like the exorcist yeah and it's like <laughs> oh, oh maybe this is a little scary <laughs> 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 um do you have any favorite sailor scouts um i think i'm leaning towards sailor saturn just because i like like super powered characters and things like that oh, and her story yeah. her story is pretty crazy yeah her story is wild yeah she's definitely super powered like she can literally destroy anything yeah. so yeah that's a good pick if you like overpowered characters <laughs> um well I do want to talk about you also not just Sailor Moon you know I am a Sailor Moon fanatic but you know this is this is just about the show um you are a CEO of an anime studio in Japan that is super awesome uh, what made you want to start a studio in Japan? Um, where did I want to start? I think, well, I've always just wanted to start a company. I think initially we weren't planning to start it in Japan. It, I, I was planning on starting an animation studio in the, in the States, in America. But then um, because I had came out to Japan to learn background painting, and then, um, so I was already working in the industry here for a while, I think it just... When I made friends out here and um, it just became like the, um, I don't know, I guess it just became like the road that, that I happened to walk on, I guess. Like it was, there was a, a we had an opportunity, uh, me and like um, Henry and my brother and everyone, we all had an opportunity here to work on the, um, an animation. And so in order to kind of, um, to kind of see that through and everything, we decided, okay, let's start the company. And then that just kind of, um, yeah, that was how we ended up being in Japan. <laughs> well, at least that's how we started the animation series. <laughs> yeah, it was already here, but it, yeah. later. <laughs> that's really cool. I love that you're just kind of like step by step. Did you realize you were gonna be like the first is foreigner, foreigner or black person to open this anime studio, or were you just like not even thinking about that? Yeah, no, no, I wasn't even thinking about that. I still don't even think about that. <laughs> I guess that's probably good. That one, yeah, yeah, just. Um, just mainly focus on just trying to get the, you know, just just moving forward and creating creating things, you know, trying to get to a point where we can create larger content and stuff that you know, yeah. create characters that people like, you know. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. So, so so yeah, I don't know. I guess that's always yeah. I, I think I don't like consciously think about it or even just you know it, it at least here it doesn't really come up in in you know conversation so much but um uh so I don't, I don't know I guess it's occasionally I don't know if it makes it difficult or not but um but I do sometimes feel um that yeah like I 
have some some responsibilities you know mm-hmm. to our culture and things like that too so that like and I feel that a little bit more recently than initially when we started the company so, but. yeah that makes sense I feel like you've gotten known like at least over here for being that yeah. but initially you're just like I'm just doing this because I want to do it and I like like it yeah yeah <laughs> I like anime and yeah. I just want to create something you know create right. some stories and I feel like it's a hard thing with being like black and doing anything is a lot of times when you're the first or like one of the few people who get to do it it's like dang now I have like this responsibility for everyone coming after me because if I mess up then like they're gonna think all black people are gonna mess up yeah 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 exactly yeah Yeah. oh it's so annoying um on to funner things uh what's your favorite project that you've worked on um favorite project I see hmm I don't know. Let's see. I like working on Naruto. I also, also like working on Blade, even though I don't think anyone watched it. It was just a, a OVA. But, um, a Blade? Was, yeah, yeah. Well, it was, I don't know if it was called Blade, though. Was it like based on the Marvel character, or is this a. Yeah, yeah, it was Blade, like the vampire. It was like. I've heard of this. Um, what's actually what was the exact title but i like the way the animation looked in it was um, i think That's that was like the first time like painting like fire mm-hmm. and sort of it was interesting that sounds really cool i gotta look that up because i want to watch it <laughs> how did I you get it like, just, how, how did i what how like what made you like background art the most oh um yeah, yeah, right. I think it's like that's a weird thing, right? Like liking background art. At least oh, yeah, it's started. cool. Yeah. Yeah, because I think during that time, not too many people liked background art. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like a, a major thing. And in our college, we didn't even have that as a major. And when I went to the art college here in Japan, they do have a major for background art, which is one of the reasons that I really wanted to go to that school here. Just um, but even at the school, I think we only had um, so like 12 kids in our class, where all the other majors had like, you know, I don't even know, it was like 60 kids or something like that. Like I was, yeah, it was a really small program. But I think the thing that really got me into background painting was um, a ghost in the shell. Like I really, like, at least that's when I, I recognized I like background painting, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, so watching Ghost in the Shell, like that, that was the thing that I, I stared at the most. And like, it, even when I looked at my, at that, when I was in college, I had like an anime, another oh, anime. I, I had a, a scrapbook, like an art scrapbook. And, you know, I would put, um, it was for one of my classes and I, I would put uh, like photos and you know, just do like doodles and write notes. And, and I can put um, anything in it that just kind of, attracted me or like maybe like what I was interested in at the moment and like generally it was mainly just photos of like cityscapes and things like that and from anime it was just the background it was like the, and mainly just ghost in the shell like all the um different environments and ghost in the shell like I, I guess I would like um screen capture them and just kind of put them in the book and things and then that was kind of like what really um like because of that I was like oh man I guess I'm just really into like background art and stuff and so I wanted to focus a bit more on it and really get into it. I think one of the one of the first um, background art books that I bought is um, it's actually the one by the art director of Ghost in the Shell. This one is um, it's like Hikari Toyami. Oh, shoot. Oh, wow, that's so interesting. This is camera like <laughs> yeah, blocks think, Yeah, it kind of came up. Maybe if you move it towards the left a little. Oh, and now it's good. OK, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Oh man! I got it signed recently. I like finally, even though I had this book like forever, like I finally got it signed. <laughs> but that's awesome. I signed, so that's kind of cool. How do but, you? Um, it's just it's just a background background art book, but um, yeah, one of my favorite backgrounds in Ghost in the Shell, uh, because Ghost in the Shell, although Japanese anime, it, it is like a trope, I think, or one of the things that they do kind of focus on backgrounds. In, in anime, like there's like sequences where you just only see the background. Um, in the industry, they just call it like a BG only, like background only shots, you know? And, um, uh, but I really felt like Ghost in the Shell used them to tell the story. 
And um, one of the, one of the, the backgrounds that I really like is um, it, it's it's like a boat. How do you call it? Like a it's like a tugboat or something like that. But there's like this boat that's like um, going through the city and it's going underneath a bridge. And I really like that background. So I, think I would always just kind of I wanted to repaint that one, and I would always just. Whenever I would think about backgrounds, I always thought I was thought about that. I like the colors and the lighting. Nice. That's kind of what got me into background painting. And that's actually what brought me to Japan too. Um, just because I wanted to study backgrounds and the art director of Ghost in the Shell. So, right. Yeah. Oh yeah. I remember you mentioning that on the um panel that we did. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. I love that full circle moment. Like you got it signed and everything. Um, yeah, like we said, I've been trying to get my ghost in the shell memorabilia all signed. I believe you're gonna you're gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, I'm wondering if you've noticed, like Sailor Moon's also known for like background art. Mm -hmm. Um, have, have any of the uh, backgrounds called you in the movie you've been watching? Um, or I like actually I like the way that Sailor Moon paints their backgrounds. I think because mm -hmm. generally I um I like the really detailed um more realistic style of backgrounds, I think. So um, even, so where I worked for IG and everything like that, like most of the backgrounds are, you know, really polished and um, are like heavily rendered, at least when it comes to background for anime. Um, and I think that's definitely the style. Well, now now, it, now backgrounds are like totally different than anything. <laughs> like, cause they, they use CG a lot, but, um, but, the thing that I like about the Sailor Moon backgrounds is they still have that, um, they use a watercolor style, like that kind of classic style of background painting. Um, and they they use it as, uh, so they, they, they purposely use the washes and things like that. And really, um, um, I guess each backgrounds are tonal. So some, they would generally use, decide on, on a color scheme for their backgrounds. Like it's all blues or all like kind of like that. And um, I, I like that. I, I th remember when I was in in the States, I went to, to a Disney's gallery show and um, one of the animations that kind of resembles Sailor Moon's background style is um, I think it was Sleeping Beauty, was it Sleeping Beauty? kind of see that I think it's really, um, hmm. yeah I think I can kind of see that very like dreamy yeah and um, yes and um CBS, it's super water color and just the use um, uh like black out black out, black outline to cut to outline everything uh, like yeah I yeah. like that about some of these backgrounds it's yeah I just realized I'm like that is something that like it's known for, and so that's cool. I'm happy you like you also like it. Um, yeah, that's some cool stuff. I'm actually also you mentioned working on Naruto. Um, I'm actually watching Shippuden now for the first time, so I'm really excited. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I worked on the, the film, the Shippuden films. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get to that soon. <laughs> I'm really excited. I'll be like, I know who did that background. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, I also wanted to ask you, you worked on the weekend's music video. How did that come about? Oh yeah. Um, um I guess like their team had reached out to us, like we were just kind of lucky that they wanted to work with us. They they um I think the weekend these people like they really like to um I think they were they I don't know, like I mean I'm not sure like specifically what kind of conversation they had <laughs> in, in their room, but like um yeah like I, I just know that they wanted to uh do an animated like music video and then I mean, this is before like well, i guess at that time a lot of artists were starting to, to do animated videos it was either right after that one came out or like right around that time like it was like everyone was doing um animated videos and um this is that I guess that might have been one of the reasons why they reached out to us. And, and, it, and it was a pretty cool conversation. Like the Lamar, he's like amazing. He's he's the creative director for most of the weekend's um, videos and um, or like everything 
by the weekend at the stage shows and things too. And they have a really strong vision. So that, that was pretty cool. Like just kind of getting to talk to them and see how they think about things. And... That is cool. That sounds awesome. Um, I feel like I know the answer to the next question, but because you feel it, but um, what would you say is your favorite pizza nerd merch that you own? Oh, um, my, my favorite is actually, what is it? So now I, I have this uh, a VHS tape of Ghost in the Shell. Oh, that's, oh man. Yeah, you know, <laughs> there we go, okay. <laughs> this thing off. I don't know if I, I don't know how to turn this, turn off this um, mic back. It's so interesting that it like makes anything blurry. That's yeah. not you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so cool. But yeah, so it's like the original um, VHS tape. And um, um, and then recently I, I got the director who's a Mamoru Ushi to sign it. And also um, the art director, um, Kikamasa Okada san also signed it. So I had to, went to a, um, the event where Mamoru Oshi was talking. So I got a chance to, to meet him again. Um, yes, I think right now, I think this is my favorite. That's so cool. I love that you have like all this Ghost in the Shell. Like you are like a stan. Like you should do a Ghost in the Shell podcast. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I guess I could do a Ghost in the Shell podcast. <laughs> I know who to call if I ever need to talk about Ghost in the Shell. This is dope. That is so cool. I like those are some really good merch stuff too. Like I feel like you you really like you might be the number one fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gotta like there's there's still like some things that I want to have that I don't have yet, but eh, what are maybe. some like what? Um, well, it'd be cool to like like have like some of the cell artwork or something you know but of course that's like impossible and especially now i think before in japan like you could find cell art for some of the um anime and uh because th they were just like selling it you know but now that you know collecting anime and all that kind of stuff has become really big and so it's it's pretty difficult now to, to find that stuff yeah i want to see think like that one. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that makes sense. I want Sailor Moon sell art, but it's so expensive. So, what do they sell Sailor Moon sell art? That's cool. Yeah, they do. And some people like have displayed it in really cool ways. And I'm like, I want it. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, I, I'm envious of the people who can get like sell art of the stuff that they like. And, like right. Those is really hard because it was just a feature, at least a feature film. And then after that, like the newer stuff, like Sagan art stuff is, you know, is digital, right? So, but. Um, yeah. Uh, well, do you have any other favorite anime outside of Ghost in the Shell? Hopefully, maybe a little soon. Um, another favorite anime? Uh, I like. Geez, I like. A, there's a few of them that I do like. Um, so old stuff. I think I like all the classics that everybody likes. You know, like Akira and Michiko and stuff like that. But out of the series, hmm, I really like Escapone actually. And but if I had to choose the more contemporary series, like recently, I think I like um, what do I like? I think you always kind of tend to like the things that that really that you kind of first watched, you know, that at least that did something. And I think that's why I like Escafone because that was one of the big outside of like Gundam and things, but that was the other ones that. Um, I thought they did a great job of using robot, like the mecha and stuff like that, and, and then in a new way where it wasn't like this futuristic, futuristic world. It was just like this, um, and it was also, um, you know, like it was also isekai. Although, like they do that like a lot now, like everything's isekai now. But, but I think I, I like that um, the way that they explain the characters being in like. A different world but at the same time in the same world i thought that was really interesting you know but um but more contemporary anime i would have choose i don't know if it like if i if it's my favorite but like i'm watching it now <laughs> and then and it is and i do and i do like it like um probably everyone likes it like you know well like demon slayer i i like i felt like when i watched the first season of Demon Slayer, it, it made me feel like the same way that I felt when I watched like Escafone and stuff and like Last Exile. And then um, um, I, I really liked how they 
they really get you to um, feel for the characters and to understand their, their arc and things. And it's not like arbitrary. And um, so, and I like, I like how they give backstory of all the characters, like even the ones, even the, even the villains, you know, when they fight them. Although I felt like in the new season, it's like a little bit too much dialogue, <laughs> but like, it's all like exposition. My story is blah, 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 blah. And I was like, oh my God, just fight already. Right. <laughs> like, the backstory, we got you. <laughs> yeah, 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 you're right. We're going to tell you all the backstory. Right. Like too much backstory. <laughs> but like, what I do like it though. And, mm-hmm. um, I mean, there's, there's a lot of good stuff now. Of course, it's like Attack on Titan. And, right. and I liked, um, uh, what is it? Uh, what is it? Alice in Wonderland. Oh. Uh, I'm getting mixed up with the, the with the live action title now. Um, What's Dead, it? Dead Man Wonder. Dead Man Wonder. Oh, Wonder. yeah, that's an that's an anime. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you got a good yeah. list. Hmm? <laughs> Stuff. What about you? What's What's your favorite anime right now? Besides right the other now? One? Um, besides the other one, right? Um, I mean, I love One Piece. I'm one of the One Piece fans. Oh, okay. Um, I love. Have you seen all every episode of One Piece? Almost. I um, I stopped right before the Wano arc, which is the current one, mm-hmm. and I plan to catch up soon. I just like every so often I'll do like a sprint of like hundreds like of episodes, it. and then I'm like, all right, I need to like watch something else now. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so I think I'm about like a hundred or so episodes behind, but I feel like I can catch up in a few weeks if I put put my mind. Hundred episodes. That's like so crazy. Like with One Piece, the interesting with One Piece is like that's like a small number though. Mm-hmm. Like a hundred, I'm a hundred episodes behind. Like that. That's like the reason why like, people don't even watch TV shows. <laughs> it's like you're like once you get behind, <laughs> like yeah, and I'm, I'm so behind. Like I haven't. I think I've only seen maybe one episode of, of One Piece. So I'm just like, wow. ah, there's no way I can watch like a thousand episodes. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> good though. <laughs> one Piece fans are also pushers. So I won't push yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But it is really good. Um, and I will say like, the thing that makes it easy is like, it just, each episode has like a lot of, um, like they'll do a recap and they have like the opening theme and the ending theme. Yeah. Um, and sometimes they'll even like, go over like the original like reason of like Goldie Roger. So like every, when you like fast forward through everything or skip the ending, like you really get like a 10 minute episode. It's like a 10 minute, just these are 10 yeah, minute episodes. Like that <laughs> okay. Maybe um, I'll just like get a collection of just the 10 minutes. You know, listen, I've been wanting someone to do that online. Cause I'm like, it'd make it so much easier. Like put it in like two hour blocks. <laughs> I feel yeah, like yeah, people yeah, would yeah. watch it more. Cause then it's like, like true. Yeah. If you just have like these two hour, like, like a movie, right? Like it's like right. watching like Fast and Furious or something like that, where you just go watch all nine of them or something. Yeah. yeah. Just put it in like each arc, just make it a movie. Cause then I can yeah. just watch it straight through, but no one's done it yet. And I don't, I'm not, I don't have the time and the patience to edit it all together. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah. Um, I love Nadia and the Secret of Blue Water. It's one of my favorites. Oh yeah. I like that too. Yeah. Um, Michiko and Hachian. Uh, right oh, now, yeah. I'm just watching Demon Slayer. It's beautiful. And like, see, I also love backstory. So, like, that's been great. Oh, what else do I love? Oh, Gurren Lagan. That's one of my favorites. Too. Oh, Gurren Lagan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's, I've only seen a few episodes of that. Like, I always kind of, I'll, 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 I'll watch an episode that I kind of mm-hmm. like stop watching it because I, I like the story. But I'm actually not into the art style of Gurren Lagann, so I, I, it's hard for me to keep watching it. Sometimes I just kind of... Interesting. I love the art style, but I get it. <laughs> it is different. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I usually, yeah, I don't, I'm not usually into that those type of anime, so or like with that style, and so I kind of I can say like, that makes sense for me to get into it. So. Yeah, there's anime. I feel like that too. Um, it took me a while to get into One Piece for that reason, but. I, was just uh, like, I think that's I think that's the reason I don't watch one piece actually. Yeah. So I, I kind of <laughs> it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. But after a while, you, I don't know what happens. I don't know if you just get used to it or it gets better, or you just start to look past it because the story's yeah. good. But here I am on like episode 800 and something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, that's fun though. Yeah. So yeah, right now though, because it's current anime, Demon Slayer, Attack on Titan, and I was caught up in my hero. I haven't watched a new season yet, though, so I have to do that. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
but um, what advice would you give to someone who wants to get into the anime industry? Um, I don't know. I think uh, just, well, I will say just practice, like just be good at whichever part of the industry you want to be in. So if you want to be a voice actor, actress, um, you know, just get, get your voice you get control over your voice, right? Or if you want to be a um, uh, writer, you know, just be um, you know, prolific and, and write a lot, you know. Uh, of course, study Japanese for that. <laughs> you really need Japanese for that. But, um, or if you want to be, um, you know, an artist, an animator, or um, it's the same as any other um, industry, right? Like, you know, you still need to have technical skills. I, sometimes I feel like, um, the anime artists only draw their favorite characters, but they don't actually draw like the other things, right? You know, like study anatomy and study um, or perspective or, um, you know, color theory and things like that. Like that stuff is super important. And so, but whenever you want to work in a different country, you know, there's already people in that country who are working in their, in their field. So you have to always be a little bit more I'm not going to say you have to be better, but you just have to, you definitely have to just have to be motivated. You know? so, um, I guess maybe that. That, that makes that a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, like you can't, like I like, feel like that's true. Like a lot of people just draw their favorite characters, but you also need to know how to draw like different types of characters or different types of things or yeah, yeah, yeah. background art or like you said, or other aspects of it so you can see how it works together like color theory and different techniques and yeah depending on because it really depends on which which part of anime and she want to get into of course anime has a very specific style and I think and I always feel like that's the, the hardest for westerners mm -hmm. um, particularly animators like if you're a background artist or something's a bit easier to just painting right as long as you once you figure out how they get their color theory the rest is you you can kind of um be any background painter and paint right I mean style but um but the character design is really hard and I feel like um uh westerners tend to over emphasize the eyes like they make them way bigger or than they actually really are you know and then um and so I think that's really hard so maybe practice that too like trying to get that balance right um but like there's there's like a lot of foreigners working in the industry now so it's definitely possible okay, well y'all heard it here it's possible so shoot your shot, <laughs> shot. <laughs> and just like sailor moon had this sailor moon says phrase at the end of every episode what would your phrase or psa be so sailor arthel says um sailor arthel um would be what would my sailor moon name man it would be like a Sailor Dark Matter is my name or something. <laughs> but like, um, uh, I guess what would I say? So Sailor Moon says um, Sailor Arthur. So a quote so a Sailor Arthur, yeah. So the a quote that I I always had since I was in high school. I guess maybe that's what would be my quote. So um so Sailor Sailor Arthur says. Um, be realistic and do the impossible. Ooh, I love that. Be realistic and do the impossible. I love that. I'm always like, um, prepare for the worst, but expect the, oh wait, prepare for the best, but expect the worst or something like that. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Or flipped it. I forget which one I say actually, but I feel like in a similar vein, I really like that. Like, yeah, like go for it, but also, you know, yeah, yeah. realistic. Same but also anything anything is doable do all things <laughs> yes and look at you i mean you you did it <laughs> yeah still doing Anytime, stuff you know, the stars. Still, still doing it. <laughs> yeah you're killing it <laughs> um and then what's next for you and where can people find you um so what's next is yeah we're focusing a little bit more on much larger content so um we're gonna do like some work on series, put out our own series. Um, so look forward to that. And um, you can find us on most social media. I think we're just not on TikTok, but 
none of us are like dancers or anything like that <laughs> but we do uh you can find us on um like instagram and facebook and uh youtube and um, although our youtube channel you gotta update it more <laughs> but and yeah, twitter but um and just yeah if you just type in like they are um they are stagio um you can find it's pretty much anywhere cool. please follow us yeah and i'll of course drop all the links in the podcast notes for anyone listening or watching so you can go follow them and Ooh. yeah once again i'm victoria mm-hmm. l johnson host of the santa Fe fan club podcast you can find me at miss old school on twitter and instagram um i am on tiktok i don't dance though but <laughs> either <laughs> and i'm on sailor victoria um maybe i'll dance eventually um but mm-hmm. also find the podcast at moody's club on twitter moody's underscore club on instagram be sure to like and subscribe give us a review on i apple podcast and that's it thanks for listening moonies and thanks Arthel, for coming on the sailor moon fan club cool thank you for having me yeah. bye <laughs>